standing before him, my state is pointing to me and not pointing to anybody else here. Amen. Whether it's your worship word, media or any other ministry that you call in church, all this is for one purpose, that I want to seek a revelation of Christ and empower the people that are listening. Amen. Why are we praying? Coming back to the same question. I pray not because I know how well to pray. I pray not because I know how long to pray. I pray not because I have a good IQ. I can remember all the prayer requests that the pastor asked me to pray. I pray not because I have so much time to get on a prayer line. I pray not because I have nothing else to do at home. I pray because of the one I am praying to. Even if it is one word, it is because of the power of the one that I am praying to. That I still pray in now. I don't pray because all my prayers were answered before. Even when it doesn't seem to be going my way, I still hold on to prayer because of the one that I pray to. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I gotta go forward. I hope you're receiving what I'm trying to say this evening. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Stay faithful. Come close to God's presence. Long for a revelation from God. Don't be satisfied. Don't be satisfied. Don't run after Jesus for wrong purposes. My mind is taking me to so many other places. In John chapter 6, you see Jesus feeding the 5,000. And after that, people start flocking Jesus. Miracles and wonders are happening. Thousands and thousands of people are increasing. People are responding to Jesus. But suddenly started, Jesus started saying theology. Jesus starts saying hard words about his body and broken and eating flesh and some gross thing. This doesn't make sense to me. John 7, John 8, it comes even harder, it goes deeper. And people slowly start leaving because this is not what we came here for. I believe John 8, chapter 30, John 8, 31, that says that the few Jews that believed, to them Jesus said, if you will abide in me, and be my disciples, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Hallelujah. Praise God. People started following him. I believe further down, further down, I think it's verse 32, Jesus said, You are all coming because you are expecting, you are satisfied because of certain things I did. Just to paraphrase it. I'm asking for a broken generation that is longing for a sign from God. Not for some material blessing or some certain things to see certain things happen the way you want to happen in church. A true revival happen in my heart first to God. Hallelujah. Then I'm not running after God for some other purposes. You may have prayer needs, you may have prayer requests. I have prayer requests, physical needs, medical needs, financial needs. Other needs might be there. But I pray that you will not forget the world most priority that I want to see you more, Jesus. I know I'm repeating that again. I don't know how to emphasize more that we are missing the mark these days in our church. Our revelation is not coming from some outward sign. Our revelation is coming from the gospel that has already been given to us. This is the greatest revelation. This is the greatest prophecy. You don't need another pastor to come and lay hands. This is the promise that is needed. You believe in this prophecy first before you go after any other prophets. You believe in this promise first before you hold on any other promise. Like I always say, if you have a promise, if somebody says something to you, I'm not putting them down. But don't run after that, putting your promise keeper away. Then on the way. Somebody said something on your life, that might be true, but don't start turning your life and planning it because that person said I'm going to go to medical school. I've had to sit hours with young, young people that have left church because of these kind of situations. Because some person came and laid hands and said, you will go to pharmacy school at this particular school, and it didn't work. They didn't go to medical field at all. Why? Because the rest of your life you turn running after that promise. Not that prophet was wrong with the promise, I'm not questioning that. But don't run after promise without running after the promise keeper. Amen. Stay faithful. Come close to the ark. Long for a revelation. Finally, be willing to change. Amen. Be willing to be obedient. We always say that Samuel, 
You did not recognize God's calling. He heard God's call. He didn't know it was God. That's what the problem was. He heard the voice. Some of us are saying, Lord, help me hear your voice. He's been speaking quite some time. You haven't recognized it yet. God called Samuel four times. He heard all four times. He only responded once. Who helped him? The one who had been blaming all this while. The one who had been complaining all this while. The one place you have been pointing fingers all this while. Who am I and you to judge and question what people are about? You have no idea what God is going to do through who. You just stay faithful just to go along with what the man of God already mentioned. We have no right to question and write and say to fix somebody. If there's any way to fix, it is because of his grace. If there's any way I got fixed, it is because of the gospel and what Christ on the cross. If there's anyone can fix, what a brother, what a sahod and a You cover them with love and not with hatred. You don't write, you cover them with grace. You don't gossip, you cover them with love. If somebody has fallen, all have fallen short of the glory of God. But thank God for his grace. Now there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. This happens in Eli that the whole community, the whole land has been given up. Why? Because they have given up on this pastor. There's no purpose in his leadership. There's no purpose in this community. This generation is lost. This whole generation does not understand what we are trying to say. Trust me, I know this lingo. I have heard it. I have complained before. But these words, when you're willing to let the Lord speak to us, realize that it is not a generation that changes you. It is the one that is above all generations that changes your heart. Amen. So Samuel was still willing to stay faithful in that temple, not knowing what he's doing. And finally, he is about to hear God's word. He goes back to the same mentor that has been guided. Not because the mentor is perfect, but the mentor realizes what the word. Amen. Hallelujah. The mentor says, next time he calls, respond. Here I am. Speak to me. It is a place of admission. It is a place of vulnerability. It's a place to say that I messed up three times. When Samuel is saying, Lord, speak to me, what he's saying is, I messed up three times. I didn't realize it was you, speak to me now. He didn't try to justify that place. You know why I didn't follow God? Because my father was horrible, my mother was horrible, my family was horrible, my church was horrible. He didn't say any other excuses. He just said, God, I messed up, here I am, you speak to me. Speak to me, Lord. We're so quick to put it on somebody else. I have heard this when I was kid. My parents were like, "Don't do that, don't do that." My God, I'm not going to do that. I love my parents. They're still on fire for God. I thank God for their prayers and this, but they're not perfect. But I had every reason to walk away just because of the way my parents parented. But then I realized when I'm a parent of three kids, we don't have a manual. We don't know how to do this correctly. You walk with grace just like Eli did it. We're so good to judge our quality by our fruits. Your true fruits is your spiritual fruits and what you show. And it was 8.50. I'm way past the time that was given to me. Would you stand the way you are this evening? Hallelujah. Thank you.